All right, guys. So first SBF full transformation interview with Tom. He's the first person to actually do this. Uh, so Tom, we took through a 12 week transformation um, and he got pretty good results. Um, so about 10 kilos in the last 12 weeks. Um, so well, firstly, Tom, what did you think of your before and afters? Uh, it was quite amazing to see how you can actually transfer your own body. I was uh, probably fat for 90% of my life and uh, yeah. didn't ever think I could have a six pack. And uh, the day finally came. Yeah, and you finally got there. Finally right. got there, yeah. It's only 12 uh, weeks of starvation. <laughs> oh, it wasn't even that, though. It was actually uh, quite an enjoyable 12 weeks. I don't think I would have lasted uh, two weeks if it wasn't uh, sort of laid back in the sense and wasn't, it wasn't like a punishment that yes. whole 12 weeks. But I was doing the, uh, and that, that's what I try and get across to people now. It's, people think fitness is a punishment, whereas it was actually made enjoyable for me because I was learning along the way. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. And like, don't worry, man. Like I'm still learning, even though like I'm a coach and I've been doing this for almost 10 years. I still learn every day as well. Um, so firstly, Tom, just to give everyone an idea, sort of, you know, just so people can relate to you and sort of find out a bit, bit more about you. So who are you? What do you do for a living? How old are you? Give us a bit of your background. Uh, well, I'm 19 years old and I'm a, an apprentice carpenter. Yep. Um, I live quite a busy lifestyle, always going out, socialising, and uh, I'm quite an active person for my age. Um, but I've always struggled with uh, losing weight and I was always quite quite big going through my teenage years. Um, so I lost about 25 kilos over a year from about the age of 17 and then uh, sort of stagnated of where I was at with my weight and wasn't happy with myself still. So I finally decided to get some fitness advice from Shannon and uh, did the 12 week course with him, which just pretty much blew me away because I didn't think I'd actually get any further than what I was at and uh, managed to drop 10 more kilos. And you're already pretty lean at that point too, yeah? Oh, I, I was, but I had a, a fair layer of fat yeah. still on. So I was uh, at 78 kilos when I think I came to you. Yeah. But like con even considering like how far you came from originally down to where you started our 12 weeks from, like you're already fairly lean com compared to those two. Oh, yes. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. There was no definition in my body whatsoever, really. Yeah. At the start of 12 weeks to now where you can actually see pecs and... <laughs> <laughs> all the, and all all the beach muscles. Beach muscles. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Um, and then before, obviously, before we started training together, um, doing our online stuff, what what got you the results prior to doing our training? Uh, I was doing a lot of cardio exercise, yeah. so a lot of running, and uh, just because of my job as well, I was quite active. But I never really changed my food diet so much. Or when I did, I was more focusing on eating healthy, not watching my calories. So mm. I wasn't actually losing a lot of weight. I was just more... I, I dropped about three, four kilos, but then I, I sort of just stagnated at the same weight while I was still exercising a lot. So I wasn't actually advancing anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I honestly couldn't work out why until I found out it was all calories in, calories out. <laughs> that's it <laughs> you'll learn that way but you finally got there which is good um, and in terms of like your training were you doing any training before our 12 weeks uh, yeah I was heading to the gym minimum twice a week yep I uh, was doing a mix between both weight and cardio training yep but didn't really get any results out of it yep cool and then um your so leading into that, so going into our training, what was sort of the tipping point for you to say, all right, this is this is the time I'm going to start training with, say, Shannon or a personal trainer, so to speak? Um, you know, honestly, I was sick of walking into the gym being that bloke that looked like he had no idea what he was doing, yeah. And I was inspired by a couple of mates of mine that uh, 
are now like in the bodybuilding sort of stage. Um, and I took the punt, you could almost say, <laughs> take paying someone to give me some advice. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm, I spoke to you and got a free personal training session out of you. Yeah. Uh, in one day and you pretty much sold yourself in that 30 minutes. That's what um, I do. I don't think I would have been so easy to have signed up if I hadn't have met you for that half an hour or so. Yeah. Um, so that was a really sort of like positive point to seeing you in the gym that I yeah. actually got to get to know you for that half an hour and actually see how you, you run your, your training sessions. Yeah. That actually, you know, made me go away and think about what I wanted to do then. Yeah. Cause the first time we spoke, you didn't actually sign up straight away. It actually took you a few weeks. Yes, it, it did actually. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll and I actually follow, I actually had to follow up with you a few times as well. <laughs> Is that right? Is it? Now I'm the bad one. <laughs> no, 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 but people forget. Well, people get busy. Yeah. Um, awesome. Cool. Um, through so starting into the twelve weeks. Oh, so actually, we should probably mention it before we go there. So um, Tom trains at my gym, but we do online coaching only. So I actually don't train him in person. He just follows everything I would normally do with an online client, but he just happens to go to my gym and do everything. Um, so give us an idea in terms of over the, the 12 weeks, roughly what, what you're doing throughout the 12 weeks, what your diet sort of entailed throughout the day, what a day in the life would look like through Tom. What would you do? Well, uh, I train four times a week in the gym, yep. uh, usually in the evening. Uh, so I work full time, uh, usually six days a week. So I was always busy with work and uh, trying to fit the gym in with that as well was, you know, tricky. Mm. Uh, the other thing I struggled with to begin with, but got the knack of it quite quickly was counting my calories and working at what to eat and getting the most out of your daily calories. Yeah. Um, I, I stuck to quite like whole foods, chicken, you know, veggies, uh, wash my protein, all that sort of stuff stuff that I'd never had really watched before and was just eating anything and everything beforehand and wondering why I was still fat. Yeah. And you um, went and you went prior from this going from zero calorie counting experience to full fledged yeah. macros. Understanding how it all works and protein cap carbs and fats, yeah. Yeah, so it's uh in that twelve weeks I would almost say now that I feel confident enough in following on with that myself yep. because I haven't learned so much in that 12 weeks. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing yet, yeah, just because you're losing weight, you're actually learning how to lose weight as well. Yes. So if you ever come across this hurdle again in life, you have all that knowledge now. And that's, that's one thing I sort of have taken from that is now that if I ever get fat again, I know how to lose the weight. <laughs> that's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> McDonald's. Yeah, I know, right. You have backers today. See, you can eat calories, guys. You can eat McDonald's. Um, what did, what would you say was the biggest struggle in the last 12 weeks? Uh, the biggest struggle for me personally, because I am so busy with work would have been getting into the gym four times a week. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did go through a few stages throughout the 12 weeks where I was a bit slack with my calorie counting and that just like, it would take me a week or so to snap myself back into uh, counting everything strictly again. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things that once you change your habits, it becomes an easy habit. It's, you know, it's not, um, it's difficult for the first week or two, but then after that, it just becomes your natural. Now my natural thing every morning is I wake up, I weigh myself and then come downstairs and prepare all my food for the day. Whereas I used to just wake up and run out the door pretty much with a coffee in my hand, not knowing mm-hmm. what I was going to eat for the whole day. So I usually know in advance how many calories I'm going to have spare by the end of the day because I've thought it through. Yep. So you've already pre-planned that in advance. Yeah. 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 So, and in yeah. terms of like, so this is also it tends to be a big one for most people, uh, more specifically women, I would say the men, but in terms of the scale weight, how is your relationship now gone from the scale weight previously to what it says now? Uh, do you mean in how much I've dropped or? No. So in terms of your thoughts on the scale weight itself. 
Oh, right. Uh, if I, so if I look at the scales now, I'm, I smile. Yeah. Uh, whereas I used to, I was never so much disappointed with my weight because I was quite big anyway. I used to be 110 kilos. So down to 78 at the start of the 12 weeks didn't fuss me so much because I was still lighter than I ever was. Yeah. I'll look at the scales now and I go, wow, I've actually come a fair way. And it sounds silly saying it, but you actually feel lighter when you step on the scales. Yes. When you're used to, I don't know if it's just a mental factor, but if I look at the scale now and go, oh, well, I'm 70 kilos, I'll look at that and go, well, that's an achievement. And that, you know, that yeah. actually makes you happy. And, and I'm sure you would have had these days as well where you would wake up in the mornings and you would already know you were going to be down in weight before you even stepped on the scale just by feeling that you were lighter that day? I knew I could almost tell you two days in advance that I'm going to be either heavier or lighter because after, after a certain amount of time of doing it and actually you, I found that I've gotten to know how my body works a lot more now and how quick you can actually gain weight but how slow it is sometimes to then lose that. It's almost like double the time to actually lose that weight after you've gained it again. Yep. I find, but so if I've actually had a high calorie day, but haven't dropped the calories the next day, I find that a couple of days later, I should be higher, higher in weight yep. than not. So I've actually yeah. gone up. And it's generally that, that one to two days out. So whatever you eat on say Friday is going to show up on the scale weight Sunday approximately. Yeah, that is generally what happens, and I, you know, never think that. And you start, you panic. <laughs> you start kilo, but then that kilo by Wednesday is back down. So, you, but you've just taken one step back to go two steps forward. Yep, exactly. And that's sort of part of the reason why I like to get people to do the daily weigh-ins and take the average over the week and take each average over each week that you compare them to, because the daily fluctuations doesn't really matter as long as the daily fluctuations sort of go down in sequence with each other over time doesn't matter what your daily weight is but the end goal is get from point a to point b sorry say again water weight isn't it yeah yeah so water weight glycogen food in your stomach uh how many carbs you've had that day how much water your body holds on to if you're a female and you're menstruating all that sort of stuff all plays a role just you can fluctuate five kilos up and down just from where your your baseline is if you're 70 kilos you can fluctuate two and a half kilos up, two and a half kilos down. There's nothing to do with fat. That's just purely food, water, hydration, salt. So um, uh, glycogen in the muscles, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so you have a much better relationship with the scale, which is good. Um, and what's, what's been the feedback? So if going from over the 12 weeks, what have people said about the transformation or what have you learned by going through this in terms of what people have said to you through the 12 weeks? Oh, this is my favourite comment. Yeah, actually. it actually really gets to me. Yeah, and this, this happened to me too. <laughs> Surprisingly, people still criticise you. Yeah. Regardless if you lost ten kilos, if you lost five kilos, or if you actually gained five kilos or ten kilos, they still find the negatives out of it. And I honestly thought, oh, you know, I'll lose ten kilos, and everyone going, oh, look at you, you look fantastic. Yeah. But I, I've copped a lot of. I've probably copped more nasty comments being skinny now than I did when I was actually fat mm -hmm. um, which is actually quite surprising I don't know if it become, comes down to jealousy but you know I've oh you're too skinny now you look unwell mm -hmm. I've been told that I actually look like I'm on drugs yeah and that that actually got to me but at the end of the day I thought well I've stripped all the fat this isn't where I want to be I'm now on my journey to where I want to get to so in other words I really don't care what you think Yep. And that's the mentality I've got now. Yeah. If you don't like how I look, don't look at me. Exactly that's right. Yeah. Um, but at, you're always going to have people that are negative and I've just learnt now to deal with that and ignore it. Yeah. I copped it when I was big as well, so I might as well cop it when I'm skinny. <laughs> <laughs> at least you have abs now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> But yeah, and it, and it goes like that, man. Like, and I, like I've explained this to you before as well. There tends to be sort of two types of, or there's three types of people, but you got people who are genuinely happy for you and the transformation that you go through. And, you know, they understand the fitness world and the, the 
the process that you have to go through to get that lean. Then you've got people who are genuinely concerned for your health. So if you lose a lot of weight really fast, especially if you lose it around the neck and the face, so people think you're on drugs or you could be you could have some sort of terminal illness or something like that, especially if you're a bit older. Um, and then there's people who just hate on you. And they just the reason that sort of happens from my experience is because you work your nine to five job or your same hours as the other person or your mate next to you works the same hours, yet you're achieving so much more with your dedication, lifestyle and commitment to training and improving your health and body and they aren't. And they, they have to try and bring you back down to their level and they just try and drag you back slowly and slowly. And I still get it to this day. Like I still get people coming up to me because I was 120 kilos. If I run into someone from high school, they're like, I can't believe you've lost so much weight. And this is still over what I was when I was 15. I'm now 30. <laughs> it still happens. And you, you'll find it will continue to happen. You think people will get used to how you look? And yes. A lot of people will get shot, but my mum's the biggest one for it. Yeah. She's like, oh, you're too skinny, Tom, you're too skinny. Yeah. That's just their natural instinct, I think. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's also an association because they've, they've known you your whole life to be a large person. And then they've seen you go from a large person to such a skinny person. That's not normal yet because they haven't been around you long enough for you to be the skinny person in the family. Yes. And if you, and I've explained to you, to you this last time as well, is if you go and meet someone else for the very first time who hasn't met you before when you were overweight, they wouldn't even have a preconceived notion of what you should look like to where you are now. So they just, they just know you as lean Tom as opposed to overweight Tom. I haven't seen both. Exactly, yeah. They've got nothing else to compare it to. And then once you do your bulk, then you'll be fat Tom again, but muscly. And they'll be like, Tommy, you were so skinny and lean. What happened? <laughs> um, no, that's really good. Um, what's sort of been, what would you say has been the best out of the last 12 weeks that you've gotten out of the tw- well, last 12 weeks of training? Uh, probably everything I've learned, in all honesty. Yeah, just losing uh, just losing the 10 kilos is probably the small part of it because everyone just thinks, oh, you know, you've lost weight. But I've, the amount of knowledge I've learnt now is probably, you know, thousands of dollars worth mm-hmm. or years and years and years worth of, you know, nutting it out. As, as you said, you serve up the polished package now after 15 years of you nutting out how, you know, how to do it the quickest mm-hmm. and efficient way. But yeah, what I've learned and also, you know, the fact now that I've got a six pack, that makes me pretty happy. <laughs> um, you know, half, half a pack for each oh. that I went through. Um, <laughs> but I've learned, yeah, I've learned how to sort of be dedicated to actually achieving something. Yep. So you actually, you know, you know, you're going to the gym to work towards something every day. You go in there, it's, you know, you're walking out of there knowing that you've achieved or you hope to have achieved a better, you know, a rep or higher weight while you're in there. Yep. You, you feel better in yourself. Your self-esteem's a lot better because you walk in, you walk out, you think you're buff and massive. <laughs> Twiggy arms again. But... <laughs> After the pump goes away. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've probably, I've learned a lot of things over it. And it's, I was saying to someone the other day, actually, it's like, I might become a fitness coach now. It's like a, new hobby for me and who would have thought tom was the you know the one to be all fit and healthy and talk about getting six packs you know i was the one that was like let's go and get mackets mm-hmm. but my whole mentality has changed towards fitness now and, yeah you know yeah no it's awesome man it's really good well that's how i started like i started off as a fat kid overweight 120 kilos hated sports played video games at least 20 hours 40 hours worth a week you know, a few hours a night, eight hour sessions on the weekend. And now I train people to lose weight for a living. <laughs> what was your passion before you started working though? For PT? Oh, I didn't really have any major jobs. So I did, um, I used to work at McDonald's, my first job. And then I worked in the call center for five years doing sales. Yeah. And I, through that time, I'd lost a lot of weight, gained weight, lost weight, gained weight and lost weight. I thought to myself, well, I can't, can't work in a call center for the rest of my life. What am I going to do? And I, at that point, trained my younger brother 
to lose 20 kilos at home body weight training and just some light cardio. And he was lazy. And if I can get him to lose weight, I was like, I can get anyone to lose weight. <laughs> and that's sort of what was my, my break into the sort of the fitness industry world. And, that yeah. was, um, and then my, yeah, my first personal training position was in the city of Melbourne um, in a fitness first. And that's sort of there. That's how you start. Yeah. yeah. Started, it is, yeah. And I started very similar to you. Um, and moving forward, so what's your thoughts on sticking to this plan long term? So what's, now what's your, now your thoughts and long term approach for this type of training and uh, lifestyle? Uh, well, so at the start of the 12 weeks, I had a goal to shred all the fat. But so now that I'm at that stage, now I've got the goals just keep sort of, well, I'm not happy at this stage now. So I want to now get bigger. So now the next goal is to actually start trying to bulk up in muscle and then obviously re sustain that look for as long as I can. Um, I, people say now, I, you just keep striving to reach new goals because once you get to a certain spot, you want to keep getting further and further. And I think it was you that said it to me. Yeah, you, the goalpost keeps moving. You, you keep get, getting to each home base, but then you'll want to keep increasing further. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, once I'm shredded, I'm happy. I'll be, I'll be out of there. But now I'm actually like, oh, well, I've got this far. Now, where's the next step? So you're always looking for the next step. So that, at this stage, I'm just looking for the next step and how to get there yeah. the most efficient way, which is bulking. So uh, I'd, I'd like to hope that I can stick to counting my calories and going up in a lean bulk and attending gym four times a week and fitting it all into my lifestyle still. Yep. Um, because it's more of an, it's a passion now more than a, uh, a need yep. to do it. So I'm, you, I'm, wanting, I'm wanting to do it opposing to needing to do it. Yes. And yeah. Yeah, as opposed to like a means to an end, it's now, you're now that person who trains at the gym and in, in social situations, it's like, Oh, let's do this. It's like, well, well I've got gym first. And then after gym, we can go and do this. And, that, and that's what it's like now. And I go home with my mates and saying, cause oh, I've got to go to the gym. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> yeah. And then now, now the priority shifted. It used to be social, then gym. Now it's gym, now socials. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah. yeah, exactly right. Um, and then just lastly, to finish off, Tom, what would be your general advice for others? So that if you know, in the same situation you are, who was sort of skeptical or, you know, maybe sitting on the fence, um, what would you say to them to get them moving, get them started? Um, call you. <laughs> well, yeah, you can do that. Um, don't go for a 10K run on the treadmill. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I thought that was how you lose weight uh, until I learned that was count your calories. Yeah. So learn how to count your calories and work out what your daily calories are to lose weight. Uh, as Shannon says, you won't have any problem losing yeah. weight if you count your calories. And the same goes as with bulking. Um, you just increase. So calories in, calories out, which is now I've learned, which I had no idea about 12 weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Uh so I'm, I'm on 2,300 calories to lose weight and now I've gone up to 2,900 to gain muscle. Um, I told that to someone the other day and they just laughed at me because they didn't have an idea what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> but um, No, honestly, I would actually say get some professional advice or someone just to give you a kick start. Yeah. Um, and they, everyone's got different ways of training and coaching, but I found this one's probably the best way so far because it hasn't been a torturous sort of three months for me. It's, I've still been able to go out and live my life from Shannon's coaching, and I'm not being biased in saying that, but the way he has set it up is a realistic way to train. Yep. Uh, life doesn't stop to get a six-pack, in other mm -hmm. words. Um, so yeah, my only advice would be really to go get some advice. Yeah. To give you, unless unless you are passionate enough to start researching and all that and trial and error, but if you want to get straight to the point, uh, find a good personal trainer. 
six pack shortcuts. <laughs> you can shut this number if you like. I'll put it up on the screen. <laughs> that was cool. Uh, cool. Easy done, Tom. Did you want to finish on anything else? Uh, no, just other than thank you for uh, helping me out for the past three months and uh, getting to me where I wanted to get to. You're welcome, man. I give you the I give you the uh, the plan and you just put the hard work in. Join effort, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> Be on your case. To put your numbers in. You go on. Yes, I'm going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> all right man thanks for getting this together and um so tom's now on his bulking program so we've set his calories up for 2900 same weight training sessions will probably increase his training a little bit in the future um and then depending on how his bulk goes successfully over the next three to six months we might try and get him back on for another one of these and see what the results are if we don't get too fat <laughs> <laughs> nah, you won't let yourself get there now anyway. Well, hopefully not. Nah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching.